All right. Thanks again for joining our webinar today, uh, entitled Four Reasons to Adopt Caroline 8E Now. Um, aside from my editorial colleagues that I've already mentioned, today's webinar will be presented by Bob Elling, lead editor for the eighth edition of Nancy Caroline's Emergency Care in the Streets. Uh, back in the day, Bob learned from the first edition of Nancy Caroline's Emergency Care in the Streets in his Bronx-based paramedics course. Uh, he now has more than 40 years of experience serving as a paramedic, EMS educator, advocate, and author. He's a former paramedic program director and state training coordinator, and he now works for two sports venues and lives in beautiful Lake Placid, New York. Bob, uh, good afternoon. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, Brian. Um, well, welcome, everyone. And um, this program is broken up into various different sections. And uh, I'm going to turn, turn it over uh, to others to handle each of the sections. Uh, and then I'm going to talk specifically about Section 3. So, Section 1. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Um, this is Carol Guerrero, Senior Editor at Jones & Bartlett Public Safety Group. Thanks, Brian and Bob, for the perfect kickoff. All right, in this presentation, we'll cover the main highlights and updates in the textbook, as well as the instructor and student resources, and all the reasons why Caroline 8th Edition is the best product line to build excellent paramedics. We'd like to start by announcing the publication dates. First, we want to let you know both volumes of the textbook are at the printer. If you're interested in learning a little bit about how publishing works, we can tell you that once a book is at the printer, it's done and its arrival is imminent. The publication date for the 8th edition textbooks is August 15th, just a few weeks away. The purchase books will ship to you within days of that date for your classes. Also, the live date for the, advantages, the Advantage and Preferred packages with instructor and student resources is the same date, August 15th. My colleague Tiffany will discuss details and the full array of comprehensive instructor and student resources later on. Next slide, please. We'd like to focus on the success of your students now. Barb Alert. This team was uniquely capable of translating the education standards and ensuring that we have published nationally accepted best practices in pre-hospital medicine. Unfortunately, Barb Ehlert was unable to join us today. However, Barb and the team held a recorded webinar this past spring that your sales rep can share. Actually, you may know Barb from her paramedic textbook, Paramedic Practice Today. An important part of the eighth edition was the integration of content from that book. Where applicable, content from paramedic practice today has been incorporated to strengthen and round out the Caroline program even further. Barb says she can't wait to hold the new edition of Caroline in her hands. Next slide, please. Uh, we wanted to mention, um, as you know, materials for paramedic education must follow the national EMS education standards as a baseline. At the end of a paramedic course, your students must prove competency in these areas. So to ensure your educational resources prepare students for their exams and the field, we wanted to mention that we list every competency statement as shown here. There's a couple examples of pages here on this slide. The competencies are page reference to where they're covered in the chapter, and in addition, we developed detailed knowledge and skills objectives for every chapter. Next slide. A foundational aspect of the Caroline text is that it teaches patient assessment in a single comprehensive chapter, ensuring that students understand patient assessment as one integrated process. This allows instructors to teach patient assessment the way paramedics practice it in the field. As you can see at right on this slide, uh, each medical and trauma chapter uses the same language and visual cues to strengthen students' command of this process, constantly reinforcing the material presented earlier. Next slide. All right, now to our favorite part. A special highlight of the 8th edition program is its current state-of-the-art medical content. With paramedic initial education lasting one and a half to two years, it's important that the content in students' hand is the most current available. The content in the 8th edition is current and is heavily cited to the medical literature available now. 
On this slide, we list some of the standards and documents we consulted during content development of this edition. Where applicable, the authors and editors followed additional authoritative sources, such as national stroke guidelines. And last but not least, the eighth edition thoroughly addresses the 2015 ECC and CPR guidelines published by the American Heart Association. The updates went beyond a compression rate and depth change. The text has been completely updated to reflect all of the guideline changes. Next slide. All right. Uh, emergency care in the streets has always been known for its effective pedagogical features. The eighth edition adds a few new features to showcase the evolution of patient care. One such feature we wanted to bring to your attention is the inclusion of endnotes or citations that support the chapter prose. Uh, for example, all statistics in the text have been updated to current sources. There are a few examples on the screen here. Your students are receiving data from today, not five or ten years ago. A full references list appears at the end of each chapter. Another such feature is the new evidence-based medicine feature box, such as the one shown here on spinal immobilization. Throughout the book, these boxes highlight current medical research and studies and how the evidence relates to paramedic practice. Next slide. And in keeping with showcasing the evolution of patient care, we emphasize the importance of patient safety. New patient safety feature conveys core concepts related to the reduction of patient care errors and also provides practical tips throughout the book in context with chapter topics. This way the students can synthesize how and when to apply these practices. Also, we wanted to mention that a complete patient safety chapter is included as part of the Navigate to online offering. So students can read about this important topic in full for additional study and comprehension. Next slide. All right, we always hear that instructors can, have too, can never have too many case studies. The 8th edition retains and updates its two scenario features. The you are the paramedic scenarios that progress throughout the chapter, and also the assessment and action feature at the end of the chapter. These provide genuine context for the application of knowledge. Both of these features have been thoroughly revised to focus on critical thinking, asking questions about assessment and treatment of the patient in that scenario. Each chapter also reinforces proper documentation. The you are the paramedic cases shown here conclude with a completed, accurate patient care report for that scenario. As in the 7th edition, the 8th edition includes step-by-step -step skill drills. However, in the 8th edition, all the skill content appears in the skill drill itself. This was done based on instructor feedback to facilitate student comprehension, enabling students to study the full skill information in one place. And if using the ebook, students can click on skill drill videos to see the skill performed. The skill drill captions in the 8th edition also align with the steps in the National Registry Portfolio Skill Sheets, ensuring that students are prepared to perform skills the way they will ultimately be tested. Next slide. And finally, the AOS Orange Book series has always been recognized for its outstanding photographs and illustrations. With the 8th edition, you'll notice significant updates to the art program. In addition to hundreds of new photos shot by us, of particular note are new childbirth photos shot by Dr. Andrew Pollock in conjunction with the childbirth video project he spearheaded. The updated photos and illustrations showcase injuries, skills, and important visuals in high quality, current, clear imagery. We also show key heart association algorithms with permission of the AHA. Some examples are shown here. I hope this gives you a clear idea of the global updates to the Caroline Project. Now I'd like to turn the presentation over to you, Bob, to discuss the major content updates in each section. Okay, thank you, Carol. Um, next slide. So, so now we'd like to provide a sampling of the more significant changes to each section. And, um, but in the interest of time, this presentation does not go into every single change. Um, there are additional smaller changes throughout the text, 
to update the material to current medical knowledge and practice. Now let's go over the, the more major changes, such as new chapters, new sections, uh, or topics of particular interest. In section, um, section one, preparatory, uh, we've included the EMS compass, the EMS performance tracking, as well as community paramedicine and mobile integrated healthcare as an evolving career option. The disease transmission section has been updated, as well as uh, social media and, and HIPAA are addressed, and, and there is also a section on effective communications. Based on feedback from the program directors and educators around the country, we added a chapter on medical terminology. Medical terminology was previously addressed in the documentation chapter of the last edition. But educators strongly prefer that we dedicate a standalone chapter to this important topic. This chapter thoroughly covers components of medical terms, topographical and anatomical terms, abbreviations, acronyms, uh, symbols, and pharmacological uh, or pharmacology terms. It also um, aligns with the Joint Commission of an Institute on Safe Medication Practices for error-prone abbreviation lists. So that's all included in there also. Next, next slide. In section two, the AMP has been revised, reorganized, and expanded. In this way, the anatomy and physiology foundations are not repeated in the trauma and medical chapters. Um, if it's necessary to go a little, in a little further detail in those chapters, we do, but we don't repeat the same information. It's all put in the A&P chapter, um, kind of like its own standalone um, book on A&P. Uh, we use some of the content from paramedic practice today as well in this section. The pathophysiology chapter focuses on those factors that affect or upset homeostasis. Um, there are new sections on disturbances in fluid balance as well as immune responses of the body. Next slide. In section three, the format and flow of patient assessment used throughout the book has been better organized for ease of teaching, learning, and practice in the field. We have also added in additional content such as situational awareness, causes of provider injuries and fatalities, as well as a number of refinements. We have also added in content on cultural competence to better prepare paramedics for today's patients. Next slide. In section four, we have expanded the content on pharmacogenetics, anticoagulant and antiplatelet meds, as well as reducing medication errors. We've expanded the content on reducing medical errors. All right. um, the pregnancy categories of meds uh, have been updated, as well as the uh, American Heart Association classification and, and of recommendations and levels of evidence are included. So the students are well aware of um, where this all comes from. Next slide. In section five, we have completely updated all pertinent sections to comply with the 2015 ECC CPR guidelines. There are a number of additions, such as the IGEL supraglottic airway device and the use of a, a video laryngoscopy that have been uh, uh, shown and described within the chapter. The discussion of uh, the use of capnography has been expanded from the previous edition also. Next slide. In section six, uh, we've made a number of enhancements, such as um, oxygen therapy has been updated We've updated the stroke and STEMI information based on the latest guidelines. The section on diabetes has been expanded. 
Um, poisoning and OD or overdose sections include the latest street drugs and opioid overdose uh, overdose information affecting all of our communities throughout the nation. By the way, um, I, I also did want to say that there is a comp there was a comprehensive update to the emergency medications appendix. Um, there were uh, 32 new meds that were added, as well as the um, tall man lettering system, for, uh, which is used for safety purposes. So that's also been revised in the um, emergency medications appendix. Next slide. In Section 7, uh, Trauma, there have been a number of updates to the trauma assessment and management based on the most up-to-date guidelines and evidence that we have available. Areas include spinal, man spinal management, managing hemorrhage, uh, management of the concussed patient, and uh, the latest uh, American Burn Association Burn Severity Guidelines. Next. Um, slide, please. And Section 8 includes updates to post-resuscitative care, as well as the um, pit crew code training concepts that have worked, worked so well in many communities, and emphasis on teamwork for the management of a code. We also added in um, feedback devices that are used uh, during cardiac arrest management. Next slide. In section nine, uh, it's content on autism spectrum disorders and hospice and uh, palliative care. The neonatal chapter has been fully updated to align with the seventh edition of the neonatal resuscitative resuscitation program where applicable to um, the field of paramedicine. Next slide. Section 10 covers, certainly covers all the items listed on the screen, as well as adding the concepts of salt triage and adding the content on um, epidemics as well as disasters. Finally, recognizing that in the U.S. healthcare system, the role of the paramedic is rapidly evolving, and we've added a chapter on career development. In addition to discussing the changes and expanding career opportunities for paramedics, this chapter presents non-traditional specialties that paramedics may need in the future to fill evolving roles in the healthcare system such as critical care, tactical positions, and future roles that may develop over the next two decades. This, um, so this, this concludes the content highlights in the major sections of the textbook. Tiffany Selter will be um, presenting the next section on student instructor resources. Thank you. Great, thanks so much, Bob. We wanted to round out the presentation with some information about the student and instructor resources that will support the 8th edition program. We've continued to build out the resources available in our new learning management system, Navigate 2, and we've made a number of meaningful enhancements to specific resources. Our ultimate goal with the student and instructor resources is to provide a comprehensive and strong foundation to support multiple types of educators and learners. Our hope is that you'll see a noticeable improvement in learning outcomes by taking full advantage of these engaging, accessible, and effective solutions and tools. Next slide, please. If you aren't already familiar with Navigate 2, I would encourage you to talk with your PSG sales specialist to arrange a webinar. Navigate 2 offers mobile-ready course materials, including an interactive ebook, an engaging audiobook, progress and performance analytics, practice activities, and additional study materials for students. These student resources help to reinforce comprehension of course materials and hone critical thinking skills. Navigate 2 also offers a full suite of instructor resources, including detailed lecture materials, a customizable test bank, 
a robust gradebook, and access to real-time learning analytics dashboard. Navigate 2 enables educators to teach online, on-site, or in a hybrid format. I just wanted to quickly highlight a few of the new resources included, included in our Navigate packages. Based on a lot of great feedback from educators, we've enhanced and diversified the instructor offerings for the 8th edition. We heard from many of you that you wanted more focused lecture materials. In other words, slides and lecture outlines that highlight, highlight only the critical content rather than covering all content from the chapter. We also know that some instructors do want more detailed lecture materials. So we decided to offer two versions that we refer to as comprehensive and focused. Offering two versions allows you to teach the way you want and even vary your approach depending on the topic. Some instructors have told us that they've been using the focus materials during their lectures and encourage their students to use the comprehensive slides as a study tool. It is completely up to you. I'd also like to point out that all associated lecture notes have been added to the notes field for each slide for easy reference. And lastly, don't forget that in addition to Navigate 2, all lecture materials are also available in our online instructor's toolkit. Also, as Carol mentioned earlier, the Caroline 8th Edition Navigate course comes with a full bonus chapter on patient safety, covering core concepts such as crew resource management and safety culture. This chapter provides a solid background in patient safety concepts and teaches best practices and strategies to minimize common patient care errors. Next slide, please. This new resource is an extremely exciting one for us to present. When you think about the way you currently train and take a close look at the emerging guidelines for scenario-based testing in EMS and for program accreditation, it's easy to realize that we must begin to train in a more comprehensive way. That being said, we know that simulation is becoming more and more important to EMS education, especially with the creation of the new NREMT psychomotor exam but many educators aren't quite sure how to incorporate simulation into their courses. With the eighth edition, we will be including comprehensive simulation guidance documents and chapter-specific real-world scenarios built around the objectives presented in your lesson plans. Whether you have extremely limited resources or a $100,000 sim lab at your fingertips, simulation can easily be incorporated into your paramedic course. From detailed scenario setup instructions to guidance on properly evaluating team communication, leadership, and performance using a crew resource management score sheet, we will provide you with all the tools you need to run effective simulations. Using the simulation content in the 8th edition, you have the ability to directly impact how the future paramedics sitting in your classroom right now will render care to every patient they encounter for the rest of their careers. Next slide, please. In an effort to provide all of the resources you need to manage your paramedic program, we've added the FISDAP scheduler and skills tracker tools to all of our new packages. If you feel stressed about record keeping, accreditation, certification testing, managing an internship schedule, or keeping tabs on your students, FISDAP will definitely help make your life easier. The simple to use and flexible scheduler gets students' clinical internship schedules easily organized online, where educators, clinicians, preceptors, and students can all view and interact with the live calendar. You can assign shifts directly to students or allow students to add their own shifts. Under your discretion, students can also easily swap shifts with their peers. The FISDEP scheduler also helps you manage compliance, allowing you to assign requirements add site dependencies, and track expiration dates. The scheduler is fully integrated with the FISDAP Skills Tracker, making it even easier to manage field and clinical experiences, from scheduling the shift to documenting patient information. The Skills Tracker documents student learning, reports achievement and growth, and aids program accreditation and self-study. I just want to quickly highlight a few of the valuable features of the Skills Tracker. First, when shifts are picked or assigned, they automatically appear in the skills tracker, and FISDEP will email you when a student has a significant patient encounter, and will also send you the student's patient care narratives. Additionally, through the skills tracker, 
You can access and customize the integrated NREMT skill sheets, allow students to evaluate their peers, and review the popular Eureka graph, which signifies when a student achieves competency at a particular skill. Lastly, performance graphs and reports help motivate and guide students by identifying their strengths and weaknesses. I wanted to mention that FISDEP also has a newly updated mobile app where students can access shift information and maps, enter patient care data, snap and upload photos of critical documentation, and even manage shift sign-offs. Lastly, we want to point out that all FISDEP products from the scheduler and skills tracker to validated exams and preceptor training are available for purchase outside of Navigate. So students and educators who are not using our paramedic program can still benefit from these awesome tools. Sorry, I know that was a lot of talking, but the truth is we're really only scratching the surface when it comes to what FISDEP offers. Next slide, please. We're happy to introduce our new interactive ebook. Uh, responsive and mobile-ready design creates an improved user experience across a variety of screens. Easily adjustable text size improves readability and the zoom function allows to ease users to easily enlarge images. Interactive enhancements, such as videos and audio clips, are embedded throughout the ebook and are placed near the most relevant content for a seamless learning experience. Key content from the ebook can be highlighted for later review, and students and instructors can make personal or shareable written and voice notes. All key terms are linked in the ebook to the interactive glossary for easy reference. Knowledge check questions throughout allow students to gauge their understanding of critical content as they move through a chapter. End of chapter quizzes assess overall comprehension of chapter content. The analytics dashboard captures user interactions with reports available to both students and instructors. And lastly, offline accessibility ensures that the ebook is always available. Next slide, please. At the preferred level, you and your students get access to all of the exciting Advantage level resources, plus the engaging You Are the Provider virtual ride-along videos, and the fully updated Navigate test prep tool, which is an extremely popular thing with students. We actually get emails and phone calls from students all the time wanting to thank us for helping them pass the National Registry exam. Test prep allows students to build practice exams by selecting any number of questions from each subject area. In practice mode, students can also access calculators, make notes, highlight and flag material for later review, and are also provided with comprehensive feedback. In addition to practice exams, students can also take full exams that mimic what they'll experience during their certification exam. I'd like to emphasize that our test prep products are not tied to our textbooks. In other words, regardless of which paramedic textbook students are using in their course, they will benefit from our test prep products. We also recently updated our test prep app so students can continue exam preparation on the go. We truly think that every EMS student should use test prep. Next slide, please. Premier Access is our highest level package offering all of our student and instructor resources. In addition to the fully updated interactive lectures, Premier Access includes our flagship simulation product, Virtual Ride-Along Simulations, which consists of 10 interactive branching logic lessons based on the You Are The Provider Virtual Ride-Along videos. These lessons provide an educational framework for the patient case videos and incorporate critical thinking questions, branching pathways and remediation, animations and simulations, and extremely powerful instructor analytics. Next slide, please. The student resources are designed to help students retain the most important information and to assist them in preparing for exams. The student workbook is organized by chapter and is designed to reinforce and solidify what students learn in the textbook and in the classroom. We have included a variety of exercises to meet the needs of all students, taking into consideration different learning styles. There are a number of ways to approach using the student workbook. You can create homework assignments, check students' progress and understanding of chapter content, or consider providing a grade for completion of the exercises. The answer key provided in the back of the book provides answers and page references for every question. 
However, the pages are perforated, so you can remove them at the beginning of a course if you choose. Sorry, we're just experiencing a slight delay on our side. All right. Good. So last but not least, we wanted to remind you that we offer the market-leading informed field guides that can serve as a valuable study tool and also a critical reference out in the field. The Emergency and Critical Care Guide is also available as a fully searchable mobile app and has recently been updated to include current drugs, interactive tables, and calculators. Next slide. We got there just a bit of a lag. All right, so this is probably what you're most interested in. Um, so I'm happy to present this slide. We are so excited to confirm that the eighth edition is currently being printed, as Carol mentioned earlier, and will be published and shipped to our warehouse on August 15th. Our warehouse can expedite shipping depending on your class start dates. If you have any questions about when the book will physically arrive in your bookstore or at your doorstep, please contact your sales specialist to confirm the exact timing. They will certainly do whatever they can to accommodate your course's specific needs. The Instructor's Toolkit and Test Bank will both be available for download on August 15th, and the Navigate Advantage and Preferred courses will also be available at that time. Please note that the ebook is in development now and will automatically be added to your courses the first week of September. We certainly understand how critical it is for you to have all the tools you need to begin teaching your course. Interactive lectures can be time consuming to create, but we are working hard to have the full premier course with the interactive lectures live by December. If you need access to the premier course earlier, please speak with your sales specialist. Last but not least, the student workbook will be available by February of next year. All right, this brings us to the end. Thank you so much for letting us share these exciting updates with you today. Uh, we'd like to take your questions now. So if you haven't done so already, please submit them via the chat function. And I will hand this over to Brian now. Thank you, Tiffany. Great job, and uh, great job, Bob and Carol. Um, we do have a few questions already. I'll jump into those, but um, remind everyone again that you can submit questions in the chat. I would encourage you to do so. Um, from content to availability dates to just about any questions you have, we're well represented today and can probably tackle any questions you want to throw at us. Um, the first question we received um, was in regards to uh, a current user's Navigate um, course for the seventh edition, and he was wondering if we would be able to clone that course for a new um, eighth edition course build, and the answer to that is yes. Uh, we can clone that. We'll be able to keep all those customizations uh, with ease, so you won't need to go and do all that uh, legwork again. So, so we'll be able to make that nice and easy for you. Um, a second question we received um, was uh, around FISDAP. So we talked about the packages and uh, the availability of skills tracker and scheduler within the packages. Uh, the question was particular to study tools, unit exams, and comprehensive exams. Those are still absolutely available. They're just not available within the uh, Navigate package, so you could buy that separately and you can work with your public safety rep um, on pricing and ISBNs and all that good stuff uh, for that. Um, we are just starting to get some questions into the chat, so bear with me as I um, address these. Will the uh, exams be available in diploma? Um, I'll kick that over to you, Tiffany. Yes, they absolutely will be. Um, we'll make sure to have that done as soon as the course goes live. Okay. Thank you, Tiffany. Yeah. Um, we have a question regarding uh, FISDAP's availability offline. Um, certainly on the mobile app, which we talked a little bit about, is it is now available offline in that capacity. I believe that that is the only way that FISDAP is available offline. 
um, but through the app, which uh, which I think Tiffany mentioned is a free download now in the uh, just about every store out there. I won't go through them all, but uh, I encourage you to download that now. Um, all right, I'm just going to read this one verbatim. I hope it makes sense. Uh, we mentioned that the PHTLS curriculum and AHA information were in the book. Would the students still need to buy the PHTLS and ACLS and PALS books, or is there enough content in these books um, to eliminate the need for that? Who would like to pick that one up? So this is Bob, and I'll jump in on that. <clears throat> Having been a program director for a number of years, and years ago I, I wore a state hat too. So. That's really a, a, the answer to that really depends on your program and your medical director and what your region requires. There are some regions where they're very, very specific. They want providers to carry a, a PHDLS certification and they would like them to have ACLS cards and all that. So, you know, I mean, it's, it really depends um, on what your area requires. Certainly, the concepts from those courses are built into paramedic training, and we've addressed them well. But, um, you know, the, a lot of those uh, additional courses, I mean, we can, there's a long list of additional courses, or, or the so-called merit badge courses, that tend to be uh, a little bit more oriented towards recertification or continuing education. Um, that are standalone courses that do an excellent job. But I think that a lot of the concepts are pretty well covered in the Caroline text at this point. Um, but clearly, the bottom line is that's a decision that has to be made by your medical director, your program director, based on the needs of your particular region. Okay, thanks, Bob. Um, if anyone has any follow-up questions to that response, you can chat those uh, as well, of course. Um, next question is, will the ebook instructor markups roll over when a course is copied? So um, I think we're talking about seventh edition course um, ebook instructor markups uh, to the new eighth edition course. And, and the answer to that particular question, unfortunately, is no. And the reason for that is um, Tiffany talked about some new features and enhancements in the uh, the new ebook. It's an entirely new platform, so we're not able to roll the changes or the markups from from old to new. Whereas normally we would be able to do that, but with the change in ebook platforms, in this case we wouldn't. So you'd want to try and get an inventory, I think, of whatever markups you made to the seventh edition book. We can clone all of your other customizations, but the ebook ones would need to be handled separately. But certainly, a course copy from a seventh edition ebook to a to a, a new seventh edition book, you know, a new seventh edition course, those would certainly be copied. Uh, can the workbook be printed without the insert keys? Uh, I, I would say no to that. But um, as I mentioned earlier, the pages are perforated, so you know, I know it's a, a little bit of a pain, but Certainly feel free to grab a handful of those pages when you get the books and just tear them out uh, before you distribute them to the students. That would be my best suggestion. We have, um, you know, we, we talk to our customers all the time about their preferences for um, programs that use the student workbook, and it always comes in at about 50% of, of educators want the answer key in the back because the students use it, you know, for, for their own learning and the other 50% want it as a, a gradable component. So um, that's why we include the answer key but print the student workbook with perforated pages. Um, and I'll also add to, um, to Tiffany's comments that, um, as, as she mentioned, we are moving to a new ebook platform and we are looking into um, turning the student workbook into um, a digital asset. So students would actually be able to um, use the student workbook questions and activities uh, within the Navigate um, platform um, as an interactive activity as opposed to the printed workbook. So um, in the next couple of months, we'll have some more information about that. But if you prefer to use the student workbook questions and activities as a gradable component in your course, I think the, um, the, the digital student workbook will help you out with that. 
We have a comment that the digital workbook is a great idea. Great. Um, question about AMLS. A bit off the um, off topic, but fine. Um, when will the when will AMLS become hybrid? Good news there. Yes, definitely. That's a great question. And if you've been waiting, thank you for your patience. Um, the the hybrid online modules should actually be going live today or tomorrow at the latest. Uh, they are done, and we have finished QA, and um, we're just getting ready to push those live. So. Um, again, if you've been waiting to teach an AMLS hybrid course, we appreciate your patience, and I'm fairly certain that um, the new modules will be worth the wait. Um, they're they're pretty amazing, so that should be um, this week for sure. Great. Um, we've okay. Is Gems going hybrid? Is the next question. No. Um, also a great question. So. <laughs> Got some NAEMT fans on the call, which is great. Um, we don't currently have have plans to create a hybrid version of Gems, um, but that comes up a lot. So you know, we are always in discussion with our colleagues at NAEMT, and and we'll definitely take that under advisement. Thank you. Um, I think this is the last call for questions. We've reached the end of the chat log. We do have time for more if anyone wants to get them in. We'll just, uh, I'll wait one moment and give anyone time to chat. Um, as we're waiting, you've got some contact information here on the screen um, for Tiffany and Carol. You've also got some links to our website, um, Facebook and Twitter, which is actually quite a good way to stay in touch on our latest products and updates if you're not following us there. Um, be great if you did. Uh, nothing else on the chat coming in. Um, as we're waiting for last call, I would welcome any and everyone, if, uh, if you're attending NAMSI next week, uh, to come by and visit us, both the Public Safety Group booth and uh, FISDAP booth. Lots of good stuff going on with FISDAP in particular. Um, from the questions, I'm guessing we've got some passionate FISDAP users. We've got a FISDAP user meeting, which is an excellent forum to um, learn what's new and um, ask, um, you know, or request any new features or products. I know um, last year one of the things that was requested at the user meeting was an EMT entrance exam. That's available as of like today, about a year later. Um, so these things really do matter. Your attendance is important. We get a lot out of it. We will also have some sample chapters. We actually printed sort of a sample chapter um, book for Caroline 8th edition. We have the first, the preparatory section printed and we'll have copies um, to show off uh, at the booth as well as copies of uh, course manuals for some of the new NAEMT courses that just went live. Uh, the vehicle operator, the all hazards disaster and the advanced gems. So. Um, for Caroline and NAEMT fans, please come by the Public Safety Group booth and uh, you'll be able to check out uh, all the good new stuff we have. Great. All right, well, we'll let you all run. Um, we do hope that you'll reach out to us with any questions. Um, those of us on the call, reach out to your reps, certainly. Um, Tiffany, Carol, Bob, thank you again. Excellent job. And um, thank you all again for your time and participation today. Let us know if you have any follow-up questions. Thanks, and have a great day.